So we are trying to write the uh, heat, heat equation in, in the Riemannian context. So I, I recall you that in the first step right, in the Riemannian context was to say we take some volume, we have a quantity, and so we have written the P over dt, uh, the integral uh, over the, the volume V of the quantity phi. So it is equal to uh, F scalar nu in, uh, in the S, so this was computed in, uh, in omega, so P with respect to omega, and uh, this was computed uh, in, uh, in the boundary of V. So this was saying to us how much uh, the quantity is going down here is how much is flowing up. So the difficulty now is that uh, in the subliminal complex, this uh, uh, that we don't have uh, this uh, normal to the, to the surface, uh, and so we have to do in a, in a little other way. And so now uh, I, I will do in, uh, in the photo. So I take my... So let, let's take a, our volume here, and um, so I, I will just take a small piece uh, to, to make the picture. So I would like to... No, let's take uh, let's, let's take uh, <coughs> so let, let's take a uh, 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 omega and let's assume that this is a, a, a an equal surface uh, on uh, on our experiment manifold and then uh, I would like uh, uh, to compute so I have the flow. I have a vector field F, and then uh, this I would like to compute uh, how much is flowing, how much volume is flowing with F out of omega, without having the norm. And we have this very nice formula uh, that says the following: that V over uh, dt. So let's say the d over dt, uh, the integral of all of the volume. So I will call this uh, this volume here, so big pi of omega uh, of, 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 of t omega. I call it like this. So big pi, so the big pi f depends on f and depends on t and depends on omega. So this will be the evolution of omega for time t so the volume indeed, uh, along the vector field F. And you have this uh, uh, nice formula that the derivative in t equal to zero of, of this volume, so I'm integrating the volume in this pi F, uh, pi F of T uh, capital omega. So the derivative of this volume here with respect to time in t equal to zero. And so this is equal to the integral over omega over EF omega. Now I would like to prove this, this formula. It is almost trivial, but uh, there is a. Uh, let's, to, let's try to understand why it, why it is like this. So to, to see this uh, formula, so we have to recall what is uh, an integral uh, of. Uh, of volume, so now I make the proof of this formula. I want to compute what is a, uh, so how to compute the, the integral uh, of, of, a, of, of a volume. Uh, so you have, a, you want to compute the volume uh, of, a, of a set uh, V uh, inside uh, some uh, mm, uh, uh, and the national manifold. So the volume of this uh, is, uh, is this that we would like to, uh, to write. So how to, how to compute in practice this object? So in practice you have to uh, divide this volume in some uh, small piece. So some piece are not important, they are small. But you should uh, write it as the sum of an integral 
over uh, the integral of some sub-region that you uh, derive here in the different regions of I call each region Bu i, and each Bu i should be the image, so Bu i should be the image through a different uh, psi or some uh, di, and so this di is uh, uh, a domain in uh, Rn. So simply I, I, I'm saying that to, to compute in practice a, a volume integral, so I divide it in region that I can uh, express as uh, uh, diffeomorphic to some uh, region in, in Rn where I have coordinates. And then, uh, once that I write uh, this, uh, so in coordinates, uh, this will be the integral over di of omega, and then I have to compute uh, the, uh, the psi over dx1, the psi over dxn. So this is the, the way in which you compute a, a, a volume integral in coordinates. Uh. So you, you take your, your small volume, which is uh, di, you put coordinate on it, you put some coordinate here, uh, uh, here, and then uh, you write this volume in coordinates, so this will become some domain di, and then you have to, uh, to see this is the Jacobian of the transformation, if you want. Mm -hmm. So this is just the Jacobian of, of uh, this will be the, the Jacobian of the, of, of the diffeomorphism, and this is the volume that, uh, uh, and then uh, adjusted with the, with the volume that you would like to use. Mm -hmm. So this is just a simple uh, um, formula for the change of variable. Okay, so now I have to compute, uh, what I have to compute is uh, this integral over pf of t omega of omega, and so now I write uh, as the sum of the integral of uh, pf, and I take uh, time t, I take some subdomain uh, omega i, so I have my, I have my omega here, and so, uh, uh, so I have my, my p, so this was my pf uh, p omega, take a, a, a piece of this that I'm sure that I can write as image of some domain in Rn, so uh, this will be omega i, so one, uh, then I will cover omega with a uh, thing uh, like this, and then we put coordinates. So the uh, nice coordinates are of course uh, here we use uh, this direction, we use as coordinates the time, because we are making evolution with the time, and then we fix uh, on, uh, on the base some coordinates, uh, let's say uh, x1, uh, x2, uh, x, and minus 1. So this will be coordinates on each of these, uh, sorry, so the omega i is uh, here kind of base. Hmm? And what is my, my, my psi, so my diffeomorphism? So my diffeomorphism is my psi, that is sending uh, the domain in Rn in this uh, region here. So it is simply, so I have uh, take the flow, so this is the flow in time t of the vector field f, uh, applied to uh, phi of x, and phi is the map at the coordinate down, so it's the map that send uh, x1, x n minus 1 to uh, uh, phi of uh, x1, x n minus 1 that will belong to this omega i. So these small phi are the coordinates, so the map that took the coordinates on omega i give you the point, and uh, this phi, this big phi, is the evolution. Okay, so now uh, we are almost uh, uh, done because now uh, we have just to compute the this. I have to compute that, uh, that term. So, uh, so this uh, omega i of, of, of omega. 
omega, so this is a, let's call this uh, so this is one. And so all one now will be equal. Uh, so I have to take I should make the sum on all of this domain, and then I should integrate now the coordinates. So one coordinate is is uh, uh, xt. Uh, this t is the last. So because t is the last time here, yeah? so this one will be we call it s, go from zero to t, and so this will be the integral from. Uh, as that go from 0 uh, to t, and I have the integral over di, and then I have omega mm, applied on uh, differential, so dc over uh, ds, and then dc over dx1, and uh, dc over dx n minus 1. And so now uh, this. Uh, Derivative, so the sum, the integral of 0 and t, the integral over di, so omega, so dc over ds, so c is the flow of f, so its derivative is exactly f, that I should compute in the point, so in phi uh, as f over t of x. And then for the other one, I have to make the derivative with respect to x, and so we have, uh, uh, so I write all coordinates together, uh, phi t uh, f star, uh, so the differential of the map, and then phi t over the x. So like this I wrote all coordinates uh, together. So now we are, are almost done because I am interested in d over dt computed in t equal to zero of this. Is it clear? So I have to compute d over dt in t equal to zero of this. So this one may kill the integral with respect to t, and so uh, if I compute d over dt of 1, so this one will, uh, will disappear, Every, everything should be computed in t equal to 0, and so I get the sum over the integral of di uh, of omega uh, in, uh, so now in t equal to 0, so of uh, when S equal uh, uh, to zero, and so this is uh, F of phi of x at equal to zero. Phi is the flow, so it's the uh, identity. So this becomes also the identity, and so we get uh, here the F over the x. So now we sum again on all domains. So we come back to the old coordinates, and this is. Uh, the, uh, the integral of uh, of uh, ef uh, of ef omega on uh, the full set of omega because ef omega is omega computed in uh, where in his first uh, place you put f so coming back to the all, all coordinates so Yes, yeah, should, should, be, should be here, like this, no? But coming back to the old coordinates, so this uh, differential disappears, so this becomes again a, a, a form. So you can write this as a, uh, integral over omega, so you get omega computed in f, and then dot. So this is the n minus 1 form. And so we get this... Uh, uh, this nice formula that uh, is not present anymore, but uh, we will write it again. And I took the time to prove this formula because this is even if it is completely clear for uh, 
people doing a differential geometry's job, it's also easy to find on the books. <coughs> uh, and so what, what we have it is that uh, um, so what we proved, we proved that E over B T computed in T equal to zero of uh, uh, the integral on uh, the volume T uh, omega, so make an evolution of omega with the flow of, uh, of F of omega, so this volume it is nothing else than the integral over E F omega. I did uh, your uh, you are sending to zero, so there are not, not, not many other possibilities. Uh, you, you are stretching down at this volume, and so at the, at the end you get some integral on the surface, and the surface, uh, the only ingredients that you have uh, are just uh, your form, your f, and so should be, cannot be other than that. So the differential geometry was built to get uh, these things working well. Okay, so now let's come back uh, to our uh, heat equation. So now I, we know how to express uh, the volume that is uh, that is going out uh, this uh, uh, manifold. Okay, so we have a uh, let's write things again once more. This is my volume V. So now we make uh, all uh, what we said, so minus b over dt computed in t equal to zero. So now took the time t equal to zero, then we come back to any time uh, of the integral over the volume v of, of t times omega. So how much is going down on uh, uh, here? So it should be equal to how much is flowing. Uh, out what we said here in the unit of time and unit of surface so will be uh, d over dt computed in t equal to zero of the integral of t uh, f is the flow t and uh, dv so now I put in the full uh, in the full volume v and so now I use a uh, my beautiful formula, and so we get that this is equal to the integral over, over dv over e uh, f of great. So, uh, and see this computed in t equal to zero. Huh? Oh yes. Because f uh, uh, depends on time. So now I, I, I use the definition of, uh, uh, no, sorry, now I use the, the stop steer. So the stop steer says that the, the integral of a, so you have a volume, so you compute the integral of a n minus one form of this volume, is the same as computing in, in the full volume the differential of uh, this form. So the Stokes theorem says that the integral on a, so, no, on a manifold that you have to assume, uh, of course, uh, oriented with boundary uh, so <coughs> the, the boundary of a manifold M of a N minus one form this by definition, so by Stokes theorem, this is the integral over m of dt. And this is what's about here. So, uh, great. So now I use the definition of a divergence. And so you understand now because I took some time to recall the divergence, because this was uh, uh, precisely the divergence. Uh, of, uh, of uh, f, uh, so the divergence of uh, f times omega, and so we get the integral over the volume uh, v, so the divergence of f in omega, and 
And so now we are uh, done because I will postulate uh, that f uh, is minus the gradient uh, of my function c. So this will be the Sutherimanian gradient now. I have the right Julio flowing uh, uh, along, the, along the distribution. So I, I, I should recall that uh, now uh, this is still called omega, but omega is uh, now many volume 4. Okay? Because uh, uh, at the moment, as I said, in some and geometry, we don't have uh, uh, yet uh, uh, a way of, of defining uh, uh, a volume. And so, uh, if I postulate this, uh, so now I have this is the integral over v of minus uh, the divergence uh, of the gradient uh, of, uh, uh, of phi in uh, omega. And now we have that uh, omega, uh, the volume V is arbitrary. And so we get uh, this nice, uh, uh, I mean, we get exactly the formula that we are uh, expecting. Uh, so that uh, also in the Sabrimanian context, uh, we have uh, a Higgs equation of this kind. Uh, so the Laplacian of phi, so this would be the Sabrimanian Laplacian. Uh, and the Sabrimanian Laplacian is defined as uh, the divergence. So here I write omega down to recall that this divergence depends on the choice of omega and then uh, uh, composition with the gradient. Uh. <clears throat> so the diversion of o omega and then composition with the gradient uh, uh, that is uh, sublimated. And this is our heat equation uh, in the sublimated context that now we need uh, We need to know volume of you, you, you need to have a volume. Yes. So this equation will be a question that depends on the volume that you put on your name. So if you change the volume, uh, you will change the equation. So at a certain point, today I hope to have the time, I will explain uh, in certain cases how to get a volume uh, from the main. In certain cases. But this is not always possible. Uh, okay, so some, some properties. So this one is, is trivial, but it is uh, uh, fundamental. So uh, an expression in, uh, in terms of orthonormal frame. So delta uh, Sabrimanian of phi uh, is equal, so this will uh, prove that this is uh, crucial. So the sum from 1 to n uh, of a uh, uh, fi square mm, plus the uh, uh, divergence uh, of uh, fi, the diversion with respect to omega of fi, uh, fi applied uh, to phi. Okay, we have this uh, nice formula. So my, uh, I have my orthonormal frame uh, f1 fm. I'm thinking to have a. You can think this in any case, it's correct in any case. If you think to this locally uh, with a, a two orthonormal frame, 
if you want to think this globally, with a, uh, just a, a generating frame uh, with vector field that may, maybe are parallel. So the expression is the same. So this is, a, this is okay for a for true or normal frame. Here we build again 
the divergence. So this is uh, uh, exactly that term. Because this is the divergence. So this is the divergence plus the divergence of uh, So, uh, this formula is, uh, is okay. So, this formula is very useful because you see appearing uh, omega explicitly. And so, you see that uh, the choice of the volume, so this is the fundamental part, uh, of uh, omega uh, affects uh, only. First order term. And not the second order terms that are those responsible of uh, at least uh, of, uh, of, of, of the heat current asymptotics. Okay. So now let's see some. Uh, some properties about uh, the solutions of this uh, operator. Excuse me, I don't understand. It affects only what? The, the first order terms. Because so this is first order term. Mm -hmm. This is second order term. So I only appear only here. Okay, some properties. Uh, uh, some other properties. So in the remaining case, uh, uh, delta uh, is <coughs> elliptic. So what does it mean uh, when, when a differential operator is uh, elliptic? So um, essentially means that. Uh, P is elliptic, differential operator, if uh, you can write uh, P applied to phi as the sum over Ej of certain coefficient Aij uh, um, Di Ej phi plus some first order. With the with a i j, so this fundamental is matrix that is positive, uh, positive definite. Let's write the index up. That is a, okay, uh, positive definite and symmetric. So essentially, it is a. The fact that the Laplacian is uh, elliptic and the fact that you are in Riemannian geometry, it is essentially a tautology. Because the, if you write this operator, uh, so the second order term has always this form. So this will be really G, G I J in coordinates. So if you have an operator like this, and our operator has exactly uh, this form, so remember the expression in every matrix. So delta phi was 1 over square root of g, and then it was uh, uh, di, and then it was uh, square root of g, uh, gij, dj, phi. It was, it was this. And so you see that the, the uh, the, the first order, the second order term contains exactly GIJ, so this would be uh, GIJ, DI, DJ, plus, uh, plus other terms, so this would be precisely uh, the, um, 
the inverse of the metric. Okay. So in the Riemannian case, this is a elliptic, so this is all theory of elliptic equation. And so now I will state uh, without proof because this will require maybe one half. Uh, this is the famous theorem of Orlander in the sixties that says the following that uh, if you take some vector fields uh, y0, y1, yn uh, smooth smooth vector fields uh, uh, on, a, on, a, on a manifold uh, of the stating in Rn but it is the same uh, and these are uh, Lie bracket generated then uh, the operator L that is equal to Y0 plus uh, uh, Y1 square plus uh, Yn square so Y0 is applied just once and the other one are applied twice so this uh, is an uh, hyperliptic Precisely our structure. So this one, in Sabermanian context, so in Sabermanian context, this is our Laplacian, and so uh, we have uh, that uh, F1, uh, Fm are. Uh, so our normal frame are we bracket generated and uh, so this play the role of uh, let's say of uh, y1 so yn and uh, the role of y0 so it is played by the first order term by the inverse of fi times uh, uh, fi so this is exactly our context. Uh, so our set of vector fields is uh, the bracket generated. So be careful, be careful because we have a, a little more. Because in Ormander theorem it is required that uh, you build the full Lie algebra with y0, y1, yn. You can use all of them. In our case, uh, we are able to use the Lie algebra only with uh, y1 and yn. So we have a little more. We are able to build the Lie algebra just with this. Okay? So Ormand theorem asks that you, you have an n plus 1 vector field and you need to be able to build the full dimension of the space, but we are able to do this with just n vector field. That's a little more. Is it clear this? this? Because F0 is a vector field that is built by the other one in our case. It's just the, uh, this first order term that depends on the volume. So, and we know that we are Lie bracket generated with F1 and Fn. Of course, if you are Lie bracket generated with Y1 and Yn, you are also including Y0. You get the full dimension more, more easy. Hmm? That's precisely our, our context, and we have a, a really uh, also a little more. A little more. So, uh, what does it mean uh, hyperliptic now? So, this romantization can be applied directly. So, uh, <coughs> So, I believe this means uh, that uh, uh, means that uh, mm, so L operator is a 
Okay. Yeah. If for every distribution, uh, distribution here in the uh, sense of, 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 of analysis or so generalized function, uh, the final on uh, an open uh, omega in our, in our, many, in our manifold, uh, an operator is a colleague. If uh, for every distribution we find a pair of open omega, uh, we have that L phi uh, C infinity implies that uh, uh, phi is C infinity. Hyperlytic means that uh, if you, you apply this operator on something that you don't know which regularity has and you get uh, as a result a C infinity function, then you can conclude that your function is a C infinity. So at the moment it's not clear why it is useful this. We, I will conclude later on that thanks to this property the solution of my heat equation are always smooth, thanks to, thanks to this property. And now it is not yet not clear. So <clears throat> I will explain this in a second. Okay. So now let uh, uh, just see uh, some example of our elliptic uh, operators. Uh, first one is an elliptic operator. So elliptic operator R F elliptic. That's clear. Uh, simply by definition, elliptic operator, if you want, are just built uh, with, some, with some vector fields uh, that are, so we have a n vector fields that are always linearly independent, uh, and so you apply this theorem, which may be some first order term, and so you just apply this theorem directly, and so you have a Librac generated for elliptic operator, you even don't need uh, to compute any Librac. Mm -hmm. So elliptic operator, so for instance, so for instance, the Laplacian, the Laplacian in R n, so uh, I don't know, in R2, the other dx2 plus d2 in R2. So if you want, you can think this is a dx dx square plus uh, dy square, so the two vector fields are dx and dy. So dx and dy, you know, have no, even no drift here, no y0, you have just two vector fields in dimension 2, are linearly dependent, so this is hyperliptic. Okay. Uh, second, so uh, the heat of operator. In, uh, so the, the heat operator in, uh, in uh, for instance, uh, in Rn again. The heat operator of, uh, in Rn is gt minus delta. So d2 over dx2 minus d2 over dy2. In R2. In R2. Again, for the same reason, because this has two vector fields that generate everything. But be careful that this is not elliptic. So it's 
sorry, this is, no, 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 this is uh, the heat operator in uh, Rn plus 1, so this is, uh, uh, this is in, uh, in uh, R2 cross R, so I write like this, so this is time and this is x. So the heat operator is really hyperelliptic in a 1 plus 1 dimension, also considering T. But this operator is not elliptic in R2 times R. If you compute, uh, if you write this as uh, some second order term, so your matrix 3 by 3 has one zero eigenvalue. You have one and one. So this is the matrix that we called before Aij. Because T is not square, so this is not. Uh, it's not elliptic uh, uh, operator. But anyway, it is hyperelliptic. Uh, so, I just want to tell you uh, a couple of other things that we make a uh, brief uh, break. Uh, so, how to use this hyperellipticity uh, property? So, for the, for the heat. So, look to the following. So, uh, if uh, I can uh, guarantee that uh, uh, a solution of uh, so a heat equation, so dt minus the delta subrimanian t uh, equal to zero exists uh, in this minimal sense uh, then uh, since uh, zero is infinity then this uh, would imply that uh, phi is infinity so this small remark is uh, uh, is, is crucial because I said okay we for matter theorem tell us that uh, our our subrimanian uh, Laplacian is uh, uh, hyperelliptic but it tells also that uh, Yes, so this I forgot to say, to tell. So, I forgot to tell. So, indeed, so we, we, we know that the, the Sabrimanian attraction is a hyperlytic, but also also dt minus delta is hyperelliptic. So, so this is hyperelliptic because it is a, uh, why uh, it is a, so as I, as I said before, so y0 is uh, this uh, divergence of fi fi and uh, y, y1 is f1 uh, and so on. But also this is hyperelliptic. So I zero, uh, y0 will be dt minus uh, this term, the divergence of fi, fi. And y1 uh, will be equal to f1, or f2, and so on. So not only the Sabrimani Laplacian is hyperelliptic, but also the heat operator is hyperelliptic, and this time I use also the fact that the direction t is generated by by y zero mm? by, by t by t. So this I, I forgot to say it. that's uh, that's crucial. So we have our Armander theorem that says so if this in the algebra is is full dimension, then our operator is hyperelliptic. You can apply both to the Sabrimanian Laplacian and to the heat operator. The Sabrimanian Laplacian is true because 
you have that y1 and yn generate everything. And for the heat operator, you have that y1, yn generate everything in the space coordinates. And the uh, y0, which is just a first order, generated in the t coordinates because it is here. Now our problem to study solution of, a, uh, of, of, of the heat equation for the subliminal plasma is uh, to uh, guarantee in, uh, that you, you find some solution of this equation in, uh, even uh, non-smooth uh, and, uh, and uh, bad but because if you find that there's a, a solution of this equation then you will know automatically that the solution will be, will be uh, smooth so how to guarantee now the existence of a solution of such an uh, equation. So we have the following uh, uh, theorem that uh, um, I'm not sure, but more or less uh, everybody uh, know. That is say that uh, uh, if uh, you have an operator um, that could be I call, I call L, so is uh, essentially if I join the So, 
more regular than the sound in distributional sense, and you, you will have that automatically your solution is the same thing. So this is the way in which we are, uh, we are going to proceed. So at the moment we just know that this is uh, algoelliptic, but uh, from some general uh, result in functional analysis, uh, we know that uh, if we can prove that this is a uh, Let's essential self adjoint means that it is well defined, this L2. Uh, what do you mean essential? Now I explain. I will explain in, in, in details what does it mean essential self adjoint. And so the next step, so I now explain what means essential self adjoint. The ne next step will be to find some condition that we guarantee that this. Uh, uh, this operator is uh, indeed essentially self adjoint. So the theory of self adjoint operator is a long uh, story, but uh, <coughs> can be explained at least the idea. Uh, so, what does it mean? Uh, we take a uh, so let A a linear operator on uh, on uh, some inbound space of H. And uh, its domain, because usually when you when you work uh, with a differential operator, you work on an inter space, and uh, the domain of the operator is uh, uh, is not all the space, because we see this now for the for our uh, delta h. So delta h now we consider delta h in L two. Of course, uh, so I have to work in an inverse space, so we work on it. And uh, delta H, uh, we consider it as an operator on L2, but its domain cannot be all L2, because the, I have to compute derivative. And L2 contains bad functions. So, uh, so this is easy symmetric. So indeed, uh, uh, so this is, uh, let's say, uh, so this is a symmetric in uh, on the space of C infinity function in, uh, at compact support. So uh, because you have that uh, C delta H C is equal to uh, delta H C C, this is integration by part. integration by parts, you have no boundary terms because you have uh, that uh, 
they are working on functions that are at contact support. Uh, but uh, so, but this is a, so it's well defined. Uh, so it's symmetric in detail, something that is much smaller. Huh? So this is much smaller than that. And uh, and we have that uh, uh, so we have this property, and we have this other property that uh, the domain, so the domain of the uh, joint uh, of uh, star is bigger. Then the domain of, uh, of the domain of the operator delta h. The domain of delta h is a set of functions proper support. And for the domain of the joint, we have that delta h uh, star c phi. So this is equal to, by definition, c delta h. And so this is equal to the integral of C delta uh, sorry delta H uh, phi. And so this is defined. So it's enough that uh, delta H phi belongs to L2. So let's write it here. If 
management, uh, you have that uh, the domain of A is included uh, the domain of E, so the domain of E is equal, so E uh, is self-adjoint, is equal to this, this uh, and then uh, you have that this is included uh, in the domain uh, the adjoint of A and then uh, uh, you need uh, this condition and the second condition it is that uh, okay it should go to coincide with the can coincide and uh, when the larger possible set uh, applied to phi and it's uh, to H phi inside uh, the domain of E star So we say that uh, uh, an operator is a self-adjoint extension if it is an operator uh, defined on a larger domain and that uh, such that uh, it coincides uh, where it can with, with the old operator in the largest possible way, so on the domain of the adjoint and then, uh, so this is self-adjoint, it's operator E and in its domain, of course, it is equal to the domain of, uh, of the adjoint So we say that uh, uh, an operator, uh, so now I come to what does mean essentially self-adjoint, so uh, A uh, is uh, essentially self-adjoint, If uh, uh, it permits a uh, unique uh, self adjoint extension. So, in, in did you say the operator it is just a symmetric? Uh, it is essentially self-adjoint if uh, you can extend uh, to a self-adjoint operator uh, in, a, in a unique way. And so there is this uh, other theorem of functional <coughs> analysis, uh, you know, the proof uh, uh, that uh, if A is a symmetric uh, and non-negative this is exactly our case so that means that the phi a phi is always bigger uh, or bigger than zero on the domain of A then uh, this implies that uh, uh, a self-adjoint extension So you can, uh, if you have an operator like uh, an operator of, of, of our kind, so we can we can always build some uh, self-adjoint extension. But uh, in some cases will be unique, and in some other cases uh, will not be uh, unique. Okay, so let me uh, uh, going on. Okay, so the, the, the idea is more or less the following. So consider, for instance, uh, just to make some example, you take uh, R and you take the Laplacian on R. So the Laplacian on R, you can prove that it is uh, in L2, so it's not self adjoint, but it's essentially self adjoint. And indeed, uh, you can write the solution of the heat equation. In, in unique way. Take now the Laplacian on, uh, on the half line. So this is delta on R. 
you can just uh, apply some kind of class. So this operator is not essentially self-adjoint because you should, uh, you know that for PD you should give some boundary condition here. So each boundary condition that you give corresponds to a different self-adjoint extension. By itself, the operator, so if I give you some initial condition here, for instance, like this, I don't know, and I want to know the evolution, uh, I, can, I cannot for the Laplace on, on the half line. You should uh, tell me if here you would like a Dirichlet boundary condition or Neumann boundary condition or something else. Otherwise, simply the evolution, you don't know what is it. And this is due precisely to all that. The, the Laplace on the half line is not essentially self-adjoint, and so the, the evolution is not, is not unique. So we absolutely need to, to work with self-adjoint uh, extension. So I already uh, said to you that if we can prove that our operator is essentially self-adjoint, then we have a, a unique solution. So now, what we know to now, that if uh, delta H is uh, essentially set a joint then there exists a unique uh, uh, solution of dt minus delta H equal to 0 in 2 and as a consequence so this is our number So this solution is smooth. So the heat is smoothing everything also in the sublimine context. But of course we have to, to, to guarantee that uh, uh, our <coughs> operator it is uh, uh, essentially set up. Okay, so we have almost finished. I would like just to to, uh, to give you well, the lecture of this second part of the lecture will not give much proof because all of this it is quite heavy, but the concepts are not difficult. So, uh, how to guarantee that uh, your operator it is uh, essentially self adjoint? So, there is a beautiful theorem uh, of Swigart. that says uh, that uh, if uh, our sublimine manifold uh, uh, M um, F1 F, uh, Fm is complete uh, as a space uh, Then, uh, then it is essentially different. So I need to tell say that it's essentially of a joint and uh, not negative. So this implies, I already said, that uh, it exists a unique uh, solution in a two, in a, in a two. and of matter implies that this is uh, simple. And uh, there were two proofs. First, uh, it was proven uh, in the Riemannian context, uh, I don't know, in the 80s, I think. And then he wrote also in the, in the sub Riemannian context, uh, first he wrote uh, uh, the proof of, uh, 
still thinking that abnormal were never optimal, so it was the, the, the big problem in the 80s, uh, and so he corrected then the proof after, but the, the result is true in any way. Okay, so, the, so if the manifold is complete as metric space, then we are, uh, uh, everything is working. So I already said what are conditions for instance to be uh, to be complete uh, in uh, so in Romanian so in, in Romanian so complete uh, is equivalent to geodesical complete. So this is uh, of Rinov. And in Sabrimanian, we have only this one. This one is simply uh, this is simply not normal. Due to abnormal. Due to the due to the presence uh, of, of abnormal. We have no abnormal you can invert, but uh, otherwise not. Okay, so I would like to conclude with now with a, a very simple example that I ask you to follow as the last sense of this hard day. And so I would like to, 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 to explain you why being liberally generated, it is so uh, crucial to be uh, smooth as a solution. Uh, so all this hold because we are Dirac generated. So our Mander theorem. So today we made some uh, 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 rough course of functional analysis, but the full theory comes from our Mander theorem. It says we are Dirac generated, and then the heat will go uh, in all directions and will smooth everything. So why it is important? So why Dirac uh, generated is uh, is crucial. So it's not an, a, a, just a sufficient condition, <coughs> but uh, anyway, it is, a, it is very important. Well, let's make an example, this is a very stupid example, and then we take uh, even not a uh, uh, So you take an operator L, that is uh, uh, dx squared plus dy squared. Uh, in, uh, but we take this in R3. So if you want, I'm taking a, in a, a tree, uh, the vector field 1, 0, 0, and 0, 1, 0. So I take something that is not the bracket generated, and I consider this operator dt minus L. So I consider this in, uh, uh, of course, uh, 0 infinity uh, times uh, a tree. And I wanted to show you that this operator, it looks like a heat equation, but now it's not the uh, bracket generated, admit a solution that are not smooth. And uh, it is simple. So we take a, a letter psi of dxy, a solution of a this equation dt minus L uh, equal to zero, but in uh, zero infinity times uh, R2. Hmm? So I, cons I have uh, this equation, so this equation here, they consider both in R2 and in R3. Hmm? Uh, uh, does not dep nothing depend on Z, hmm? so I have xy. So I have a kind of a heat operator that can act in R3, so Z is not uh, appearing, I can act it in R2. And so now I claim that uh, uh, if I take any function of Z uh, of x, y, 
and I take, for instance, the theta function of Z. So theta function is a function that is zero on one side and one on the other side. So this is Z. So I claim that this is a solution. That why I supply the operator and uh, I apply. Uh, I should prove prove that. Uh, uh, so I, I have I want to prove that dt minus l applied to to psi of t x y theta uh, is equal to zero, and then uh, so this is a so theta is a function of z, so this is a not appearing, and so this is true because this. Uh, this key in this. And so you see that uh, I have built a solution of this equation that it is not as smooth. Because if I'm not the bracket generated, if I start uh, with a singularity, so there's a singularity in Z, this will just uh, go like this. So because Z is the, the system is not seeing Z. And so the fact of being uh, Libraque generated, it is a, uh, it, it is, uh, it avoids anything like that because the fact that your distribution is uh, is mixing everything, uh, so you have a trajectory going everywhere. They will bring their heat with them, and uh, and then uh, you, you you it will smooth everything. If you are not Libraque generated, of course there are some intermediate situation in which you. Uh, you are not the graphic generated, but still you mix everything, in particular the case that are uh, smooth but not analytic, but this is not now the, the problem. But uh, in general, if you are not the graphic generated, so if your distribution uh, generates a foliation, then on the foliation, different uh, sheet of the foliation are not uh, speaking one on each other, and then you can start with a uh, initial condition is not smooth, and you will never be smooth. And so I, I thank you very much for your attention, and we will see on Tuesday. Yes. And so on 